Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we've got a full squad post San Antonio boot camp. What's up, y'all? We got to start with the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, how are you? I'm great. I'm so motivated after boot camp. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm so excited to hear about uh, the takeaways. We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? Well, I'm starting to wake up a little bit. Been been trying to get some extra sleep. It's uh, been tired, but it's good to be home. Yeah. You know, it, it's tough if you're like a natural introvert to like talk for three days and then recover. <laughs> you know what I mean? So speaking of extroverts, the nightcap meister, who is, by the way, I can tell already, it's, you know, we're recording this in the afternoon, completely sober, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? I'm great, Mark. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Bearland Aaron Williams is in the house. Hey, I'm pretty good. Still also recovering. Um, got a little extra sleep, but could probably use a little bit more that's great that's great i love it when you call me big papa tate litchfield tate i can't tell you how many people during the girl the geek segment that you were coaching were like crushing it i mean what roberto is at eighty five hundred a month now passive just under eight luke one year what's luke at now a lot a lot. I mean, it was just like on and on and on. And uh, it's just unbelievable. Like a little tear kind of like comes out of my eye when I hear this. Well, I mean, these oh. are the guys that are taking action, right? These yeah. are the people yeah. that are listening to the advice of those that uh, have been where they're at before. And they're saying, okay, if this is what Tate and Eric and Scott and Mark say I should do, then I'm going to do it no matter what. And as a result, they're making money. They're happy. They're, they're building businesses. They've built businesses. It's pretty impressive and amazing to watch them. It's inspiring, honestly. It's amazing. I, I love like Sam Rubel, who, who wasn't in, in that segment, comes up to me. He's like, so this is my life now. It's before Eric and after Eric. <laughs> he's like, so before Eric, I did this. this after Eric, in three months, I 4 x that amount. And that was really, really inspiring to hear as well. And then, of course, last but not least, you know him. You love him. The brain, the professor, the flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. And most importantly, if you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott, how you feeling, man? Mark, I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. You know, I was a little under the weather in San Antonio. It was horrible luck. It was the least amount of caffeine I think I've ever drank in the last, like, what, 10 years? I don't know if anybody would, like, noticed. I think there's a few times during the weekend, like, Eric, like, elbowed me. He's like, are you up? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this is me just without caffeine. He's like, okay, I was just worried. No, that's good. All right, so let's talk about San Antonio and some of the, uh, the takeaways Let's start with Eric Peterson. Eric, what were your, your, your boot camp takeaways this weekend? I think, um, you know, I spend a lot of time in the VIP room. Um, so most of my experience comes from there. But I will say we did some things differently this, this time around. And I think that overall, the students found it to be really beneficial. Um, we had lots of great feedback on... Um, kind of how we reconfigured some stuff in there. So, so that was really great. Um, it's always fun to help the students solve their problems. Um, so that was good. Um, you know, I also met a lot of the new uh, students in the social hours and interactive sessions and whatnot. And, you know, there's, there's some people out there that are really excited about this business and what it can do for their lives. Um, and it's, it's really fun to talk with those people and, and um, answer their questions about the business. And 
also just create more excitement in them. So, um, you know, overall, my takeaways from boot camp, I mean, it's always great to see everybody um, make new connections and um, just get reinvigorated. So. All right. Great. Great. Barely and Aaron, how about you? What are your biggest boot camp takeaways? I have to say from a coaching uh, perspective or a coaching client perspective that some of those changes that Eric was talking about were um, really fabulous. Um, this boot camp, a little bit different than the other ones I've been to. Actually, I came away with a much more comprehensive action plan and some pretty serious goals to move um, my business forward, both in the um, action of the business, as far as you know, um, helping level it up, as well as um, getting myself out of the business kind of thing, as far as the, um, the actual workings of the business itself and not so much the action of the business. So um, really powerful boot camp. Those changes are really dynamite. So great, great. The terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt, what were your biggest boot camp takeaways? You got me. There you go. I got it. Um, so a couple things. I loved meeting all the new folks, and now that it's been a couple of years, to see the look in their faces, the hope and the excitement, it's really fun to talk with them. And I noticed that the Saturday Grill the Geeks, where some of the um, coaching students went up and told their stories, really helped loosen up the room, and the room was like, this is real. When they saw other students doing where they want to be, it really jazzed the room. I, that's such a great segment. Um, and then I noticed that people really struggle with their planning. They get all these great ideas from boot camp. They really struggle with prioritization. And, you know, they'll, they'll have something on their list like journaling, journaling their successes before they go to bed versus uh, building a website versus consistently doing their daily week. And they really struggle with, with, with which one of those is more important, right? So remembering, remembering that the mailing and the marketing, that's the most important thing. And then the last thing I think I'd say is free versus paid marketing. We have so many free ways that we can market. And so when you're prioritizing which platforms you're gonna go market on, consider how successful the, the free forms are, right? Craigslist, Landmoto, Facebook, Zillow, um, before you go and spend all this money on some of these other platforms. But it was interesting seeing everyone's perspectives. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's so funny because, you know, as many times as I wanted that Microsoft Surface to malfunction, which it never did, by the way, the entire weekend. Um, questionable. There's, que yeah, it's yeah. questionable. I mean, it could have been user error there with that little doggle, dongle. We had, some, we had some sound issues, I'd say. Scott, are you going to take this? Are you going to, are you going to defend the surface? Listen, I, I know the truth. You guys know the truth. Accept the truth and move on. I don't need to keep justifying it. You know, that thing was rock solid. I carried literally, I carried a notebook there. And uh, you guys are lugging around big old bags. So my shoulders don't hurt today. You know, you guys are exhausted and you can blame it on boot camp. I'm going to blame it on all the luggage, all the baggage you guys had to carry out there. <laughs> I rebounded like crazy fast. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think to, you know, bounce back to what Mimi was saying as far as, you know, free traffic versus paid traffic, you know, I'm not sure why anyone wouldn't just start using the free plan on Landmoto. And it, it, it boggles my mind that, that people just don't even jump on that right away, uh, especially when you consider the amount of traffic Landmoto's getting, the amount of, visibility you can get the lead gen and it costs nothing um at least initially now i, I do recommend of course spending a, a few shekels to get more visibility but you could still start and put your toe in the water uh doing that but it, it makes today it makes no, no sense to run paid traffic to your own website for sure um nightcap meister scott bossman what are your boot camp takeaways? Hey, Mark. Well, uh, 
it's just a really inspiring weekend. It's, it, it hits a lot of levels. I mean, uh, it's, it's nice to go back and see friends and uh, connections of old and to make new connections, as Eric said. And to hear the stories of the, of the coaching clients that are really killing it. And, and what I kept emphasizing to everybody is that coaching today is, is so much uh, different than it was three years ago. And that, that's because of flight school. I mean, when you, when you have people in coaching for eight months that are at $8,000 a month passive income uh, or four months and they're at $4,000 a month passive income, that, that really, to me, speaks to the, the quality of our programs and, and the quality of our coaches. So it's really great to hear and it's great to see that evidence in person. And it, it's very motivating for others. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that's what I took away. Um, the, the other thing I kept hearing over and over and over again was how special our community is. And I mean, I heard that from so many people and, and I think, you know, that that's one of the reasons that drew me into this over three years ago. And, and I love it. And I think we all do, but it's just a group of, of people that are forward thinking and, and humble and, and ready to help. And, I kept hearing that over and over and over again. So that made me feel good uh, and made me feel like, you know, I'm still in the right place for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that was a, a recurring theme that I, I kept hearing how, how great our community is. And, um, you know, it, it, it's very surreal to me. Like, it's hard to look back and be like, okay. Like people keep coming up to me like, you know, I, it's amazing what you've built and it doesn't even feel real to me. It's just very surreal. Like just in that moment, like I don't have like that ability to kind of go back and, and think about even like the first boot camp and what it was like. Like I, I, I didn't plan for it, but it's just amazing um, that we are able to attract such quality people with, you know, everyone's kind of singing from the same song sheet of, you know, improving their lives helping others, abundance mentality. No one's hoarding knowledge. Like you're not going around the network hour. Like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, you know, like, like everyone is sharing and everyone wants everyone else to improve. And it's, it's really, really special to, uh, to witness. So um, yeah, our community is amazing. Just amazing. Uh, big Papa, Tate Litchfield. What was your big takeaways? You know, there was a lot of things that uh, really stuck out to me. Um, one of those things was that truly we have the best group of people that we get to work with on a, on a weekly or daily basis. And, you know, the other thing that really stuck out to me is how people come to boot camp and treat it as this working weekend. And they come in there, they come with the goal of taking action and making changes and, so many people set up goals and, and action plans that uh, if everybody does what they say they're going to do, their businesses are going to be so much further uh, advanced than they were a week ago. You know, some of the goals that people have set are going to take a month and others, uh, you know, I got a message from Brent Bauer saying, hey, I accomplished the number one thing on my list this morning just by sending one simple email out to Danielle. And so, Guys like that who are taking action, you watch them come Scottsdale in 13 weeks. He's going to not only have checked off everything on that list, but he's going to have increased his passive income and the infrastructure of his business by, who knows, 10, 20, who knows. But uh, I'm always just coming home from boot camp inspired and, and humbled truly by how much energy people put into this and, and how many good people we have on our team and who want to see other people succeed. So that's what I love about boot camp. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, you know, Brent's dad had the boot camp magic, not even being there. Cause you know, Brent and his dad are working together. He's like, yeah. my dad had the boot camp magic over the weekend. He made seven grand on a deal. Well, I know a lot of people who sold properties. I mean, John Burnett, I think he sold what was it? Two Eric, one or two that weekend. I definitely know he sold one. Yeah. Uh, no, I saw, I saw John in the airport. He told me he made, uh, like it was insane. Like 5,000% on the deal. He paid $200 and he sold it for 10 grand. Yeah. I mean, I know a lot of people who sold this weekend 
we had a nice deal ourselves. So can't complain. Everything went well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Scott Todd, what was your, uh, your big takeaways from boot camp besides that you love the surface? The don't surface don't miss great. your, your iPad pro at all. The surface is great, but that's not the key takeaway though. The, the key takeaway for me was really, um, the fact that it's really cool to see how people are taking action to change their lives. Right. You know, like literally, um, it, it's, it's, I think what's cool is that you find people that are kind of stuck in the, the rat race, right? You know, you find people that, that have their corporate gigs or their full-time gigs, whatever they are. And obviously they, they know that there's a different, different world out there that they're not tapping into. And, you know, the, the mere fact that, you know, everybody on this call is, is doing this business full-time and supporting their families. I think that that's kind of a, a testament to the fact that it can be done and can be done by anybody. And, you know, it's not like, it's not like these people on this call have any special talents. I mean, they're all skilled people, but speaking for myself, I've got no special talents. The, the one thing that I think we all have in common is execution. So, you know, it's really about taking action and doing it and uh, really prioritizing. That's one of the things that um, I think that's one of the takeaways I always had from, reviews that I ever got when I was in the corporate gig is that my boss has always said, man, you, you get dialed in on what needs to be prioritized at the right time. And Mimi kind of tucked on it too, is like, there's so many things that you can do. And what, what happens is we naturally gravitate to the fun stuff or we gravitate to what's the easy stuff. And we put aside the hard stuff and really the needle moves, not from the easy stuff, the needle moves from the hard stuff. So I was having a conversation with someone. I'll, I'll let them remain anonymous. They'll know who they are if they hear this and it'll connect with them. But you know, that they have a, they have a tendency, this one person has a tendency that they want to gravitate towards the easy stuff and avoid the hard stuff. So when that happens, they, they put aside the stuff where the money is really made or the magic really happens. They put that stuff aside and they go chase the, the stuff that, that doesn't matter. Mimi kind of hit on it. Wow. Do I, do I mail and market? Or do I create a website? Well, the website makes you no money. That's ridiculous. It's a waste of time. You can get to it when you have extra time. Well, how do you create more time? You manufacture time by hiring people. It's all the stuff that we teach, but it's all about connecting the dots in the right order. So, you know, a little bit of, of stopping and thinking and planning and really figuring out like, what's it going to take for you to execute on a strategy that will forever change your life? That's the cool stuff. And that's what I think is, is kind of cool. And than what Tate said, when everybody submitted in the VIP room, when they submitted their kind of key takeaways, man, it is really, really cool to see how they could potentially move the needle in their businesses and change their lives. No, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, one of my big takeaways was that even though, you know, I think Jeff Detmer has been in the, the VIP room like three times now, um, he still is getting something out of it. Like he'll hear the same thing, but his business is different. He's different at that point in time. And just one thing that, that Tate said or Scott said um, in that room, he's like, oh, now I get it. And then he's able to execute on it. I thought just the fact that um, learning is so much repetition. And even for the flight school people in the, in the, the main room, it was even a good um, fun, you know, a fundamentals sort of recap for them just, you know, drilling down in the fundamentals of this business, the county research, getting a list, scrubbing the list, pricing the list, all the way down to selling. And, you know, maybe there was maybe a phrase or, or something that was said just in a little bit different way that might have stuck and, and hit home for them. And they're able to go, you know, off and, and really move the needle. Um, also, uh, you know, I do think that it's, it's really important that we understand how important our environments are. And my takeaway was also like, you know, if we're the average of the five people we hang out with the most, this is an amazing average five people to be hanging out with. I mean, these are really, really driven, ambitious, bright uh, people that, you know, are again, sort of have this, the, this, you know, purpose that's way bigger than themselves. It's not just, Hey, I want to make a lot of money. It's I want to spend more time with my family. I want to, you know, be able to 
get rid of, uh, you know, the shackles of, of this corporate lifestyle and, and do the things that really matter to me in life. And it, it was just really, for me, super special uh, to see all of that. And, and just the whole room was so smart. I mean, we had, we had two Harvard MBAs in the room. It was crazy. Um, Scott Bossman, I know that uh, we want to celebrate some people that right after boot camp, they're not thinking about it. They're doing what Scott Todd says. They're moving their feet. They're taking massive action and they're going right into flight school. You want to talk about those people a little bit? Yeah, we want to give a little shout out to these people who took massive action and, and signed up for flight school pretty much right away. You know, I think it, uh, not to trivialize, uh, trivialize anybody else at the, at the conference, because that in, in my mind is also massive action coming to boot camp and learning in real time, I think is a huge step for a lot of people. So congratulations to all of those people as well. Uh, but, but for the people who took, who, who are taking the plunge with Scott Todd, uh, who are going to experience that weekly accountability and actionable guidance uh, and the tools to help with it. Uh, so we got a, quite a list of people here, Dennis, Chris, Rick and Jackie, Cooper and Diane, uh, sorry, Diana, Logan and Alyssa, Andy and Jason, Dustin, Kristen, and Giuseppe. They're ready to go. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah, I'm excited. Scott, for Todd, you, you, have, you have any, uh, any uh, advice for them as they get, get ready for you? Yeah. Don't fear taking action and don't fear change because you got to have a lot of change and a lot of taking action to change your life. It takes a lot to break the shackles of the corporate life or whatever the lifestyle is. I'm assuming corporate life, but man, you gotta, you gotta like get, get out of there. Yeah. I also want to personally give a shout out to Mitch Millum. He was in Top Gun VIP. And he's like, that's it. I'm going right into coaching. And he's going to be, you know, in real time. We took him right to the VIP room. And that, that was really special to watch. So, Mitch, if you're listening, um, lots more goodies are coming your way. So, I'm really excited for you. And he's just, he's just great uh, to work with. He's been great to work with since day one. Um, our coaching clients are amazing. They really are. So, we're at that point now in the podcast where we're going to – who are we putting on the spot this week? I know it's not Eric. It's a kinder, gentler year, 2019 for the, the technician. Who's, who is it? It's Scott Todd. It's, it's Scott it's kinda, Todd? It's kind of it's kind of me <laughs> talking to Scott because I had we got on the call earlier today and I said, Scott, I need your help. And it turned out that this tip of the week uh, might apply for everyone. So we decided to roll with it and share it with the community. So I'm getting bombarded with uh, – robot callers and those kind of things. So I went to, you know, the man himself. And I said, Scott, how do I make this stop? And he had an answer for me. Well, first, first of all, like I highly recommend Haya, right? Like the, the app, H-I-Y-A. I love that thing. You just got to make sure it's always updated. You got to make sure that you have it configured right on your phone. But Haya does a good job of stopping the calls. Beyond that though, like I reject anything. Like Tate, like set it up right. Like reject everything, reject, like accept nothing. Yeah. But beyond that, when they break through the filter, and this drives my wife crazy, I know it does, but I love it. When I get them on the phone, like when these people call me, I don't just hang up on them because hanging up on, it's like they don't know that you're serious or like that you're seriously crazy and you got to be seriously crazier than they are. So what I do is I play along. So let me give you a couple of, of my favorite scenarios. Number one, the, do you have pain? Are you suffering from pain? I'm like, yes, I'm suffering from pain. They, they like back pain. They really like, cause they're trying to get you a brace. They like back pain. So I tell them you have back pain. They like to know that you have insurance. Ideally, it kind of balances. Sometimes it's Humana. They like to hear the words Humana. Sometimes it's uh, Medicare, right? So it depends. So like, I'm a little young for Medicare, but I play along with them anyway. When, when, if they're like, oh, you don't have Medicare, I'm like, yeah, yeah, Humana Medicare. So I always go for Humana first and I kind of, you know, play it a little bit. Then they're like, you know, how long have you had the back pain? And I let them go, man, like three, four. I try to keep them on the phone as long as possible. Okay. Because remember, time is money for them and they're already wasting my time. 
And man, I got plenty of time thanks to the land business. So I waste theirs back. <laughs> then when they get the uh, approver on the phone and like, they're going to approve you. Now, this is typically like the person in America. They're typically a little bit nicer, but I still drop the hammer on them because they're like, okay, sir, I'm just kind of confirming that you have pain. Yep. I got pain. It's back pain, right? I'm like, well, yeah, you might say it's like lower back pain because really what it amounts to is you calling me being the pain in my beep. And you guys get the point, but I dropped the A word on them. And then they typically like <laughs> curse me out and hang up, which is the best, right? If they're calling you to try to get your credit cards down to zero, do yourself a favor. Go Google, like while you're talking to them, Google like, um, you know, uh, test American Express card number. And there's all these test numbers out there that still meet the algorithm. And you give them that and you give them a fake expiration date and a fake like zip code. And then what they want to know is they want to know the last four digits of your social. You can make that up too. You, you just change everything out. And if you really, really, really want to waste your time, you like skip a number, like you drop a number. So you're like three, four, uh, or, uh, uh, seven, two, eight, like you mumble it or something. Then they can't read it. They got to read it back to you. You're just burning their time. And then finally they get so mad at you. They start cussing you out. It's great. But your calls, the calls, the number of times they start to call you, seriously start to go down. And then it comes in waves. Like you might get three in one day and you do that punch and then you don't hear from them again for weeks. So I, I can't believe, I mean, this, this honestly, I, you have too much money and you have too much time. <laughs> like now, now it's got, now it's gone to the point where it's obnoxious. Well, like, you, mean, okay. like you have that much time to actually he has a do like a judo move on these people. These poor people. You should be like, look, look I know you hate your job. No one's like this job. You've got like a, like a 1% maybe, you know, that, that you're going to have a close. Go on Amazon right now. Get this book, Dirt Rich. Get ah. two ninety nine on Kindle, okay? I've got a plan for you to get out of this job. Now, in exchange for me to help you get out of this miserable job and taking rejection every five seconds, no, never call me again. Well, may, maybe I need to set up an affiliate link so I get affiliate commission. Uh, of course, you could make the Amazon you know, piece, and you then could, I can. Like, you could, leave, you could, you know, it'd probably pay for you, like maybe for like a one sock. No, <laughs> come on. I mean, you're you know you're fancy. I think like, I'd stop at Nordstrom's or something. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Mark, think about this. See, like my wife's like, I don't know why you do that. Like, why you do it? I'm like, well, one, it's a lot of fun. I think because <laughs> like I really don't talk to a lot of people. In yeah, the for you, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the my favorite one though. My favorite one was when the guy called me up and he's like, "Hey, listen, you uh you were at the mall. Now, when was the last time you ever saw one of these things?" You were at the mall and you filled out a thing to win a free trip. Like what, what in 1980? Like what, when, when did I do this? Who's done that in like 20 years? Nobody. So they're like, yeah, you fill out a thing for the one free trip. And I'm like, um, no, I didn't. They're like, yeah, yeah. Well, you want a trip to the Bahamas. And then you start screaming at the top of your lungs. Oh my God, I've never <laughs> won any freaking thing in my entire life. I can't believe this is the best day of my life. And if you're really, really dramatic and good at it, they'll start laughing. And then when they start laughing, you're like, hey, man, listen, no disrespect, but you and I both know that's a bunch of crap. That's why you're laughing. I didn't win crap. It's a scam. Do yourself a <laughs> favor. Call somebody else because I'm not buying it. Okay. And then they hang up, right? Like they get it. But it's a lot of fun, Mark. Like it's, you can, it's like my acting skills come out. You, you, honestly, you've got way too much time and way too much money to be Maybe able to like, write a spend book. that much time in a telemarketer. I should handle the book. I should write the book on how to handle these things. I you should turn it around know. on them and try to sell them a piece of land. Yeah, I, th I thought about that. Like, that's a good one. I'll try that. Maybe I can record it next time. I don't know, man. That's insane. Well, that's you're a good just, tip, you're though. Gonna you're just going to hire and, and literally how to make sure that a telemarketer is so abused that they never want to call you again. So emotionally scarred. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to emotionally scar them, but all these calls are like, look, it, look at how much Tate is losing hair over this. This is true. Are you in, all right. All they right. call Fair all enough. hours of the day and night. It's like, I'm trying to ride my bike over here, people. Let me ride in peace, you know? Yeah, right. Well, I mean, you start, uh, I mean, like you start, I mean, like, oh man, just have fun with them and just have fun with them. 
All right. I mean, there's, God, there's, I you're, you're listening to this podcast and you're ever thinking, if things have gone so badly in my life, or I want insurance that things don't ever go so badly <laughs> in my life that I have to become a telemarketer, and God forbid I have to call Scott Todd on some random day because it's my job, the way out is simply flight school. Schedule a call, go to thelandgeek.com forward slash training, build yourself that, that life insurance, literally like lifestyle insurance that you'll never, ever, you have so much passive income coming in that you'll never, ever have to take what we could argue might be the worst job in existence. Um, well, remember that, that, uh, that show dirty jobs. Yeah. Anyways. Um, so this is a way to do it. Also, um, a reminder that the only way that uh, we're going to get Eric Peterson and Tate and Scott Bossman and Bearland Aaron and the terrorist hunter and Scott Todd to keep coming on these round tables is if you give us a little love, you got to subscribe, you got to rate, you got to review the podcast. We read all the reviews. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. In exchange, we're going to thank you with the $97 passive income launch kit. So, and then, you know, with flight school comes uh, two free tickets to the next boot camp in Scottsdale as well. Includes the investor's toolkit. You owe yourself, you know, that, that favor of making sure that you'll never have to pick up that phone and just randomly call that number in Tampa that could be. Scott Todd. Am I the telemarketer hunter? You, 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 you might be now the new telemarketer hunter. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. No, no yeah. Me, you, you hear Mimi's like, I don't need this app. Like, she's like, I think I had a telemarketer call me once, once. And then like, she went in through some like, you know, government algorithm and like <laughs> removed her own number. Once. Oh, I sent the UAV over there. Yeah, <laughs> see. Yeah. No yeah. Problems. Yeah. See, that's no the problems. thing. It's like, she's the, she is the, she, she's like, that just dropped the mic on me, man. Like, that's, don't mess with Mimi. Yeah. Absolutely. Gone. One Scott call. Bo Scott Bossman's like, come on. Seriously, just go on nightcap. Like, <laughs> like, let's not waste time. Just go on nightcap. We'll have a drink together. I know your job's stressful. You know, it's all good. Eric, Eric Peterson's playing the guitar in the background with the, <laughs> with the telemarketer. And Aaron doesn't even have a phone out in Amish country. He doesn't have to worry about it. And, uh, you know, I don't even know how uh, Tate obviously has the problem that would solve. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> there you go. All right. Are we good? Tate, are we good? We're good. Eric, are we good? Yeah, we're good. Scott Bossman? Great. Bearland Aaron? Good. Mimi? You guys are too much fun. You make my day. Scott, any more words of wisdom? Uh, yeah, just, just uh, mail and market. And if you got to call me, just say I'm mailing and marketing first, and that will take me off guard. I won't know. That, that's the secret keyword, mail and market. There you go. By the way, in the chat here, everybody said you need to create your own YouTube channel of, of like, listen, of, so we can watch and listen to you. And learn and learn. Learn. Yeah. I, I, might, I might have to figure out how to do that one day. Like just hit record real fast and just have some fun with it. What do you mean? You've got the time. Well, I'm we not, sometimes I'm not at my computer when, uh, when it's happening, you know, like I'm out driving or something and I gotta, I just thought the logistics behind doing that. Yeah. That'd be fun though. You could ask them to call you back. I'm sure they wouldn't have any problem with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll take back later. <laughs> maybe you just wear a gopro helmet wherever you go just turn that on oh uh, yeah that's good that's a good one <laughs> i can't even end this podcast i've tried to say like thank you three times <laughs> yeah i've left everybody because they know people. what to do now mark like i, I i'm the, i've solved a major problem in the world yeah I, f I feel like this podcast was really inspiring and motivational all the way up to the tip of the week <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The tip of the week's going to change my change my life, so I'm I'm pretty grateful. I think it was good. Yeah, I'm I'm changing lives here, Mark. 
Yeah, one why podcast can't you have at a time. Archer, get there, get there, rich. It's three bucks. On, on Kindle, I might have to try that, but I never really thought about that. I mean, it's kind of a gen- a good idea, but go to landgeek.com forward slash dirt rich. Get get a discount on the toolkit. That'll help them. Let, invest in yourselves. Human capital. I don't know what ha- I mean. What boulevard of bad choices has someone walked on that they're in that environment where they have to be dialing for you know just random strangers asking them for things that they don't want to hear i mean it's like it's like human spam it's terrible I, i'm making america great again one call at a time larry overstreet is hearing this right now and he's just shaking <laughs> he's just shaking his head Mary yeah, Beth just, just did just did it like a like a like a like a spit take. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. I always tell my I always tell my family. Wait, you're like, on, you're on mute, Scott. Oh. I'm on mute. How's that happen? Okay. Oh, so yeah. I still can't hear you. I think the government oh, is you're just messing with me. Come yeah. on, see? That's what yeah, I should be are. doing. Like, hey, no, no, no. Oh, Marco, you're on mute. And uh, <laughs> we'll see everybody next <laughs> week. On mute. Thanks, everybody. And I fell for